Please talk into the mic. Okay. I have a bachelor's of science degree from Penn State. And how long have you been working uh, for Verizon? Two and a half years. And so it's my understanding, Nate, that you are the engineer responsible for the design of this site and for uh, the need. Can you please describe um, what the propagation maps, uh, let me take that back. What, Nate, is a propagation map? A a propagation map uh, visually describes the, the effect of the cell phone tower and what it will uh, cover in terms of providing a usable signal to a cell phone. Okay. Um, I'm going to direct your attention to the existing network coverage. If you could just generally describe in layman's terms what Bruce is going to provide. Bruce, it's not okay. Okay. This page describes existing Verizon wireless network coverage. This only applies to Verizon wireless. It is not relevant to any other service providers such as AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, uh, any of those other carriers. Um, basically, the blue, as you can see on the right-hand side, defines residential coverage. Um, if you were to compare this to the Verizon wireless website, you would notice a difference because the Verizon Wireless website is going to show you all Verizon Wireless coverage. And what we're showing here is specifically residential coverage. Um, we're noticing users these days don't have a landline phone, don't have uh, um, home internet. They, they simply use their Verizon Wireless phones for everything, for email, for work, for uh, Netflix, video entertainment, social media. So. Um, our objective with these sites is, is strictly residential these days, and um, there is also on the map defined by the desired coverage area a um, our, our intentions of what we would like to cover with this site. So, if you could just then, uh, describe for everyone, the area in blue is is covered. Those areas in the white are they the desired objective for the proposal this evening? Within the desired coverage area, yes. Okay. The white is a lack of residential coverage for Verizon Wireless. Okay. The next page is the. Can I ask a question for you? Sure. It seems like you're putting it right in the middle of an area where you have it. You already have residential coverage. That's Why? correct. Uh, this is there's twofold. There's increasing coverage to new residents, as well as relieving of um, the data capacity that just the number of users, how much data they're consuming, it is uh, the demand for data is so intense that we need to simultaneously offload a site due north, uh, represented by the red dot, is the existing site. It seems like it would make more sense to me to move it down more. Right, and what that would give us would be more coverage to all users. But what it wouldn't give us is better coverage to existing users. So if we only put it in white, it wouldn't increase the performance of the blue. So it's, it's a little bit twofold here. It's, it's providing new coverage, but it's also improving existing coverage. So we, we purposefully, when we grow coverage, we usually do it in this fashion so that we're simultaneously improving existing coverage while also offering new coverage. I don't know if you can even answer this question, but... Would the goal eventually to add yet another tower down closer? Absolutely, if, if the demand was necessary. Uh, yeah. So if, if we saw that usage when we add this site, if usage increases, then we can do that add sites. In a number of ways, we can do that, um, as we stated earlier, by charging existing sites or building new sites. 
So if you could then we'll just jump ahead to the proposed uh, 190 foot tower, 195 feet. Can you describe with assuming we would get the benefit of the uh, township's approval, how would the site generally work in concert with the surrounding area? Next page. Can we show? Yes. So this is a coverage of our proposed site only. We have effectively turned the rest of the horizon network off and we're only showing what the network would look like with this new site. What is this new site gaining on our network? Uh, you'll see it doesn't perfectly fill in the coverage gap, but as just the nature of RF, as we've demonstrated, or not demonstrated, but uh, described earlier, the topography of the area is um, challenging. So we need a large site to fill in all the, the nooks and crannies where the roads are low and the trees are high. Um, so it's, it's not perfect, but you'll also notice that the coverage spills outside of the desired coverage area. This is important because you want one site to hand off to the, near, the nearest sites. If you were to design the network so that there were small islands, uh, you would notice while you were driving or traveling that you would constantly drop calls. So the reason why we provide overlap is to provide a, we'll call a, what we'll call a handoff from one site to another. So you're essentially saying that this is the only site that you can use to accomplish? To, to solve our problem, yes. And our problem being we want to increase residential coverage in the town of Muse as well as bolster our existing coverage in Cecil Township. And, and, and if I could also, and one of the challenges is um, that exact question and every municipality we go into. Um, so, from a real estate perspective, one of the discussions we have with radio frequency engineers is in a perfect world, these guys want more sites. They need more sites. I think Mr. Mishler indicated with the technology changes and with the demands on the network, you need more sites. You don't need less in today's world. Um, but recognizing that need, you have to work within the confines of communities and townships and what those regulations are from the standpoint of satisfying uh, the township's criteria. Uh, what we presented tonight is a conditional use application, and it's incumbent upon the applicant, Tower Cone and Verizon Wireless, to meet the ordinance criteria. So that's the challenge from a real estate perspective that we have regularly with RF. They oftentimes want sites in areas where sites are not permitted. Here tonight, what I think we've tried to demonstrate and recognize is that this is an ideal location for a platform upon which Verizon can mount their equipment to satisfy their coverage objective. Um, what you're seeing in today's world, as I said earlier, or smaller sites. You're seeing those sites shrink from 400 feet to 190 feet to 60 feet, depending on the location and the directed um, communication area. If you go to South Point, what you'll see are more and more building and rooftop facilities. And those are generated in areas of higher concentration of traffic in um, commercial settings. As you can see with the boom at one point of the oil and gas industry with the development of, uh, of South Point and the new business park, there are multiple sites within those facilities. So you're not just seeing the macro world where we're constructing towers, but you're also seeing more signal propagate within those structures. Mr. Stark and I worked on a, a building a rooftop lease most recently in South Point, where we have a rooftop facility of antennas that will be moving forward. But in addition to that, we have an in-building radio distribution um, equipment set forth with the property owner to allow those users within the business park to access the network. So um, and I hope that answers your question in, in concert with all of the needs of the network <laughs> along with the challenges. Why could you not have selected a 60-foot tower? I, you know, I'm not an engineer, but I can tell you it just simply doesn't propagate enough. Um, you would need probably four or five 60-foot towers to achieve. Well, it just seems to me that there are over 20 people here who have concerns or um, beyond concerns. And it seems to me that you should be able to find a better location that can take care of your needs. Well, as I said, one of the challenges is meeting the township ordinance, and that's, that's one of the, the difficulties. Uh, and having done this for 25 years, uh, which is the constant shifting of where you locate. Um, today there are, and I appreciate everybody for coming out, 
Um, I live in Washington County. I live in Peter's Township. And I live in the South Division where there's a tower at the top of the hill. And I can tell you, I have four kids. And I live around now. Um, but my wife asked me the pointed question, why would we live there with the tower? I said, Tracy, it's my wife. I said, if I thought that there was a problem associated with it, hey, from a health perspective, although Mr. Kessler is correct, you can't get into health effect issues with this jurisdiction, but from a health issue, a property value issue, I wouldn't have built my house in Peter's Township. So I can appreciate the concern, and I understand that the people uh, may have questions or we're happy to answer all of this. I also live in a neighborhood where I can look out my front door and see a cell phone tower. But I also understand where if you are used to looking out your front door and seeing trees and farmland where you may not want to all of a sudden look out your front door and see a 195 or 195 foot cell phone tower. And I think we need to be you know, conscious of the fact that there is there are some property owners or property lines where it's a significant difference, but there's also a couple of property owners where we're talking about a couple hundred feet. And is there a better location that we can put it that it's not going to be a couple hundred feet from the property line? Mr. Yu, has can we ask? I have a question here. Uh, if you look at other well, ordinances and other towns. Can you speak up, please? John, you can, you, can you stand up and sure. state your name for the record? John Diego, Um, if you look at the ordinance for uh, Peters Township, they actually list in there, it's, um, let's see if I'm over here, uh, Section 805, Communication College and Antennas, regarding the uh, location. One of the stipulations is that, that you can't already co-locate on another side. Can you speak up, please, John? It's uh, regarding the co-location requirements. I don't know if anybody's looked at this. Townships ordinance. Um, the search radius, they mentioned the search radius of a quarter mile. Uh, in the ordinance for Peters Township, for a tower height greater than 119 feet, the search radius is actually one mile. So why would they have a greater search radius? Well, we're, we're saying that it should be only a quarter mile. Why don't we open up to one mile? And again, that's, that's related to the tower height. For a tower height greater than 119 feet, the search radius is one mile. And, and for the record, Peter's Township is in the process of amending their ordinances. Uh, I actually met with Mr. Zuck uh, last month, and they're in the process of addressing some of the problems. My kids go to Peter's Township High School. It's off. You can't generate a call. You want to get in touch with your son and daughter? You can't get in touch with them during the school. I live right in the coverage area. I have absolutely no problem at all generating a call, except for the call, surfing the internet, streaming video coverage. Well, I would just say that we wouldn't be here this evening if it wasn't the network has. It's, it's a money making business. It's, it's a big dollar, right? Well, I think they're meeting the needs of the consumer. I, I don't want to get into to a debate with you, but clearly what's happened, as I said, I've been in the industry for a long time. And what's changed is the uh, demand of the public as it relates to accessing the network. Uh, when we started, we had cell phones in our cars. I never took a cell phone out. Well, we didn't have 4G technology years ago. We 4G, 4G yeah, it's going to be 5G. It's going to be It is. Mm -hmm. So, if, if I could just continue then, just through our. Yes. 